Good afternoon once again from COP28 uh, Green Zone. Uh, very pleased uh, to welcome Mr. Ashish Koshi, uh, Group uh, COO M42. Thank you very much for being with us. Healthcare is being discussed for the first time at COP28, as you know, uh, basically. And you have a strategy, you have a heavy presence here. Tell us, please, about your sustainability strategy overall, and we'll talk later on on the technology aspect. Sure. So thank you for having me. And maybe I'll just start off just giving a quick summary of what M42 is all about. M42 is one of the largest integrated healthcare tech company in the region. Uh, it's one of the only entities that has both hospital services like Cleveland Clinic, Abu Dhabi, Imperial College of Diabetes, more fields, and also is combined with the G42 Healthcare Tech Services. We have a digital health arm. It's, we run a program called the Malafi, which is called the Health Information Exchange. We run one of the largest genomics initiatives, and we also have a super app which supports telemedicine. And, and last but not least, we have an environmental science division focused on understanding the impact of environment in the ecosystem. Yeah. Now coming back to the sustainability uh, questions that you raised, uh, we totally understand that 5% of global emissions are contributed from the healthcare industry yes. itself. But you should understand healthcare industry is a pivotal industry. Mm -hmm. it, there needs to be a cost benefit analysis to understand where and where we should reduce energy. We just recently announced a partnership with Siemens to start looking at our facilities to reduce the carbon footprint. But more proactively, we are working on digital tech solutions to reduce the carbon footprint, be it on telemedicine or the large-scale pharmacogenomics yeah. program. Yeah. Uh, I, I would like to really to touch upon uh, telemedicine. Sure. Uh, there have been some startups basically very bullish applying uh, some uh, global methods, uh, but they have basically uh, some challenges uh, have risen. How can we push forward uh, telemedicine uh, in the MENA region specifically? So uh, we have taken a two-fold approach. Uh, the companies that you mentioned are independent companies that are running software solutions. Their challenge is how do you work in a market that is insurance driven? Yes. Like Abu Dhabi is a market which is insurance driven. Yeah. Clearly telemedicine programs would have a huge initiative in it's self pay because it's giving you access to a doctor when you need. You don't need to wait for an appointment. How we are working... And it reduces no show as well. Absolutely. 100%. Now, from a large scale operator like M42, where we have 20,000 employees, we see a number of patients and we are present in 27 different countries. Okay. The difference is we've built our own telemedicine platform that's connected to across all our hospitals. How it helps, we have one centralized data lake allowing patients to access these doctors by filtering by even symptoms. You can just start typing cough and immediately it filters the portal across our network to identify the doctor. So yes, it works because in, in our ecosystem we have hospitals and also tech solutions. So we have tech solutions that support our yeah. healthcare services. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, AI basically, uh, many people are uh, warning that, uh, I mean, or suggesting that it must be regulated or it will be, uh, it will go out of proportion, especially in the very uh, super sensitive uh, healthcare system basically, uh, and in terms of data, uh, privacy and all that. How are you positioned to include AI in your uh, in your platforms, uh, taking into account those sure. major concerns. It's an excellent question, and one of the initiatives towards our ESG goals using AI is a solution that we built here in mm -hmm. M42 called MET42. It's the world's only open access clinical large language model that has passed the US medical licensing exam. There are only two other companies that have passed the US licensing medical exam. One is OpenAI GPT-4, and others Google MedPalm 2. For an open access program to pass the exam, it's a huge feat for M42. Yeah. Now one of the reasons why we made it open access is because we understand the necessity to be transparent, yeah. specifically as you rightly said in the healthcare side. Yeah. It's downloadable right now for free on huggingface.com. Yeah. It's open for researchers to understand where the limitations are, let us know, and ensure we can work together to ensure that it is rightfully acting as a clinical decision support, not just for physicians, but for patients. Mm -hmm. Now on regulations, uh, UAE is blessed to have a wonderful minister, and one of the only ministers, uh, His Excellency Olama for AI. I was on a panel discussion with him yesterday, and we collectively agree, regulations has to be there in AI. 
it's it's like all intelligence as long as it's used for the right purposes or it would go out of proportion Correct. like cyber security 100% so it's essential for the regulator to work with companies as m42 and hospitals we put the right guardrails so that operators who are developing these models knows the areas they have to operate in. Yeah. The reason why it perhaps is just not there yet because it's some, one year before you and I would not know, have even known what generative AI is. Absolutely. But I think it's inevitable and it's coming and UAE is rightfully placed with the right ecosystem yeah. to deliver such. So regulation. you think that regulating AI, UAE would be at the forefront in this regard? 100% and I think it's essential that regulations have to be there for the key sectors which touches patients, which makes an impact at a global scale. And I do see that it's happening at, at a much larger global scale also because the UN announced uh, uh, a joint worldwide regulatory body and His Excellency the Minister of AI is on that panel Yes, and I, I believe that's an essential sign of how strong the country is in supporting regulations yeah. towards AI. And about the national mega initiative that we were talking mm -hmm. about, it has been for years, would you please tell us where it is now? Sure, so we are the key enablers for one of the world's largest uh, genome population programs. It's called the Emirati Genome Program. We've currently sequenced over half a million Emirati citizens. Now, what benefits does it give to the patient, to the physician, and also from a sustainability perspective? You currently, if you're a participant of the Emirati Genome Program, you would know what works for you, what pharmaceutical drugs work for you. No longer would you need to go to a physician and explain, doctor, I have an allergy to A, B, C, D, E. He if opens Malafi right now, he automatically knows that you That's are, my file. It's your file. In, and in Arabic, on, Balafi is, correct. is it my means file. my file. Yeah. Yes. And based on your genomics breakup, he knows which drugs works for you. He doesn't need for you from a sustainability perspective since we are in COP to come here, try this drug, 14 days later, come back again. He can ensure that you visit once and gives you the right pharmaceutical drug based on your genomics initiative. Yeah. And for that, I think we, again, I want to give courtesy and thanks to this country for coming up with such a visionary program, which Very now, progressive, yes. second to none. And we are seeing results right now. It's a challenging initiative. I am the operating officer, and I know how it's, it's a nightmare of a program to run from sa sample swab, blood analysis, yeah. collection, sequencing, and deploying it as a platform. Yeah. But as an outcome, it's doing wonders. Yeah, uh, we just, uh, we were there uh, in the blue zone, um, uh, Mr. Bill Gates, and yeah. highlighted uh, the progressive uh, uh, healthcare strategy and sustainability uh, of the UAE, Mr. John Kerry, and, and of course, uh, His Excellency, the Minister of Health. How do you foresee the future of uh, sustainability in the healthcare across the MENA region? So, uh, I'm just going to repeat what M42's vision is. Our vision in the next five years is to transform this traditional healthcare model that we are living in and ensure only the sick of the sickest visit hospitals, meaning focus on large care, complicated cases. Every other case you use tech solutions, ensure people are well informed of their health using LLMs, using apps, using telemedicine, thereby reducing any sort of carbon footprint and playing our part yeah. towards our sustainability. Yes. Yeah. My last question in terms of partnerships, yeah. which are crucial basically in progressing. Uh, how do you foresee uh, the partnerships within the healthcare care, care system, including for you as uh, M42? Uh, how is it? What are the obstacles? What are the opportunities? How can we progress in this regard? So, one of our, we are a relatively young organization, but we've grown rapidly to 20,000 employees because of our diverse programs. And one of our key success is finding strong, strategic, long-term partners. And it's essential for our journey for M42 and our mission, we create and forge the right partnerships, and it will continue. And COP28 is a brilliant platform to ensure that we have the Microsofts of the world, the IBMs of the world, all working together to support us in our goals. Ashish, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you.